Hello everyone, and welcome to the 16th Astronomy Photographer of the Year. We all know you're tuning in to see who won and enjoy the dazzling images, so we're not going to stand on ceremony. We've received thousands of entries this year, and we've faced many new challenges, including the rise of AI image generation and international disruption. But even as these problems rose, we were treated to a series of stunning solar storms and astrophotographers around the world have been working harder than ever to uh, improve personal bests and take on new records. So we're in for an absolute treat tonight. I'm going to be joined by a few friends and colleagues, judges and astronomers, as we roll through the winning images this year. But for now, let's jump straight into that first category. We're going to start here on Earth with some of the wonderful images that show how we look at and think about space. We're going to start with people in space. This is the category that explores the human element of space exploration and observation. The highly commended in people in space goes to Big Brother is Watching You by Matt Jackson of the USA. Now the last few years have seen even more artificial satellites launched than ever before, with humanity taking an increasing interest in using space uh, and it's presenting new and interesting challenges to astrophotographers all over the world. A runner-up goes to Parallel Lines Over the City by Ran Shen of the People's Republic of China. The conjunction of Venus and Jupiter in 2023 was eagerly anticipated by astronomers all over the world, and Ran demonstrates here that no matter how much we build up on Earth, we can still look up and appreciate our own solar system. And the winner for People in Space is High Tech Silhouette by Tom Williams of the United Kingdom. Space station transits are always uh, a pleasure to see, but posing it in front of a very active sun gives an old favorite new drama. I'm now going to hand over to a fellow astronomer at the Royal Observatory Greenwich to talk about skyscapes. Thanks, Ed. Turning now to images showcasing our planet in the context of the wider universe, let's take a look at our ever-popular skyscapes category. The highly commended goes to Like a Blue Lava by Peter Horolek of Czechia. Showcasing bioluminescent plankton in the Maldives, set against the beauty of our southern constellations, this image reminds us of the links between Earth and sky. Our runner-up is Symphony of the Night Sky by Fei Zhu of the People's Republic of China. In contrast to our other images on this podium, Fei has chosen to show us the cold reality of space, an untracked sky giving star trails against a harsh built environment. And the winner in Skyscapes is Tasman Gems by Tom Ray of New Zealand. There's an eye-watering amount of sky and landscape in this image, showing that with enough dedication, you'll never have to settle for just one or two targets. And the longer you look up, the more you see. Our sun was approaching the solar maximum, that point in its multi-year cycle where solar activity is at its most intense. And this gave us wonderful aurora shows throughout 2023. And we saw entries into the competition from further south and north than ever before. Many more of you will have seen the Aurora this year in 2024 than ever before. And with the arrival of smartphone cameras since the last solar maximum, Aurora photography has become more accessible than before. So let's take a look at the best Aurora shots of 2023. And I hope that it encourages you to take advantage of the light show this winter. Our highly commended goes to Aurora Borealis over Brighton Seafront by Michael Harris of the United Kingdom. A highly technical shot, relying on very sensitive cameras and a high altitude drone, this image demonstrates that even a faint aurora can be captured to make a stunning image. A runner-up goes to The Green Kingdom by Philip Hebrenda of Slovakia. Philip is a veteran aurora chaser and one of the best out there, always one to look out for. And in first place, Queenstown Aurora by Laren Ray of New Zealand. This is our first Aurora Australis image to take the crown, and it's a stunning demonstration of the Southern Lights. And now I'm going to hand you over to Jess, my fellow astronomer, who's going to be talking to you about our sun. Solar activity doesn't just give us stunning Aurora, but it can also be directly observed, using specialist equipment and filters, of course. If you do want to have a go at solar observing, make sure you take all the necessary steps to protect your health and your equipment. But if you do, it really pays off, as the winners of our The Our Sun category demonstrate. The highly commended for Our Sun goes to Blue Turns to Red, Our Sun Rotates by Andres Papp of Hungary. 
This highly technical image demonstrates how the movement of the sun can be measured by the doppler vizau effect. However, Andras has stepped up by turning this data into a visually interesting image, allowing us to visualize how the surface of the sun rises and falls back into itself. Our runner-up is Coronal Chronograph by Peter Ward of Australia. Many years in the making, this image combines a solar corona captured during the eclipse of 2017 with one from 2023, showing how the sun's activity can be directly observed as it changes from solar minima to maximum. And the winner of the R Sun category goes to Distorted Shadows of the Moon's Surface Created by an Annular Eclipse by Ryan Imperio of the United States of America. This creative image shows us how we can use a partial solar eclipse to observe the peaks on the limb of the moon, taking advantage of astronomical phenomena to take impossible images. Moving now to our closest neighbor and our only natural satellite, the Our Moon category challenges astrophotographers to present the most observed object in our sky in new and interesting ways. Unlike our sun, uh, that changes slowly, the phases of the moon cycle pretty rapidly. And these changes are not just well known, but also deeply culturally important to just about everybody on Earth. Our highly commended prize goes to Crescent by Chen Yuan Chen of the People's Republic of China. This monochrome image of a very new moon, obscured by cloud, demonstrates that even at its most enigmatic phase, our moon is still a beautiful and intriguing target. The runner-up goes to Infrared Venus and Moon by Laurent Fenyes of Hungary. Taken in the invisible infrared part of the spectrum, this image shows the 2023 transit of Venus when it dipped directly behind the Moon. It's a rare sight and it's a worthy record of this cosmic event. And the winner of the Our Moon category goes to Shadow Peaks of Sirius Iridium by Gabor Balaj of Hungary. This deep look at the Bay of Rainbows area of the Moon is a true test of the astrophotographer's art, as capturing all the detail in this beautiful and popular target is a real challenge, but one that Gabor has pulled off remarkably. Now to look elsewhere in our solar system, I'm going to hand over to Jake, one of my fellow astronomers, who's going to be talking about planets, comets and asteroids. We'll take a look now at the rest of our solar system, the planets, comets and asteroids category, where we can explore our own diverse solar system in more depth. Our highly commended image this year is M100 and Ceres by Damon Scotting of the United Kingdom. Invisible to the naked eye, Ceres is one of the most challenging targets. Framing it against M100 to demonstrate its brightness and movement is a creative solution to a problem that's plagued astronomers since its discovery 200 years ago. And the runner-up goes to Methane Lights of Jupiter by Sophie Paulin of Germany and Tom Williams of the United Kingdom. This false colour image uses narrowband imaging to showcase the active atmosphere of Jupiter that would usually be invisible to us here on Earth. And our winner of the Planets, Comets and Asteroids category is On Approach by Tom Williams of the United Kingdom. A rare double podium in this category and a double win for Tom, who also took the People and Space first prize. Tom is always one to watch, but this year he really knocked it out of the park. This ultraviolet image shows how the atmosphere of Venus rotates around the planet, giving a much more revealing look into the activity of the planet than could be achieved with visible light alone. Hey, I'd like to show off our new book. It's the 13th edition of the Astronomy Photographer of the Year, and it's now available to order online and in our shops here at Royal Museums Greenwich. All 140 images in the shortlist are included in the book, along with insights from the astrophotographers themselves, uh, the competition judges and expert astronomers as well. Moving on now to our deep space categories. Stars and Nebulae takes a look at targets primarily within our galaxy, but further out than our own solar system, including individual stars, but also clusters and nebulas of all kinds. The Galaxies category celebrates the deepest of deep space observing, capturing images of distant galaxies or even objects within them. The highly commended for stars and nebulae goes to Antares region by Ben Toth of Hungary. Combining a monochrome astronomy camera with a telephoto lens intended for DSLRs, Ben has shown how the creative combination of disciplines and equipment can lead to groundbreaking results. Our runner-up prize goes to Serpents, a mosaic, by Mukund Raghuram of the United States of America. 
This incredibly deep image represents nearly two months of intermittent observing, carefully capturing, stacking and stitching individual frames to create a vast image full of detail, where the longer you look, the more that you can see. And the winner of Stars and Nebulae is Unexpected Discovery, Supernova Remnant G107 by Marshall Dressler of Germany, Bray Falls of the United States, and Jan Sante, Nicholas Martino, and Richard Golley of France. This team spent more than 260 hours collecting data to explore this newly discovered supernova remnant. It's a rare amateur discovery, and it's proof that astrophotographers are still a vital part of the scientific community. Turning now to our most distant targets, the Galaxies category explores the deepest reaches of our universe, the most distant of targets. The highly commended prize goes to the tidal streams around the Sunflower Galaxy M63 by Sophie Paulin, Jens Unger and Jakob Sana of Germany. This team used a private remote observatory to not only reveal M63's elusive tidal streams, but also dozens of background galaxies. Our runner-up is a very deep look at Markarian's chain by Jakob Sarner of Germany. This difficult cluster of targets not only reveals the details of this area, but also the bridge between two galaxies, a rare intergalactic phenomenon as matter is stripped from one galaxy to another. And the winner of galaxies is Echoes of the Past by Benz Toff and Peter Fototi of Hungary. The team travelled to Namibia to capture this image of Centaurus A, which is completely invisible from up here in the Northern Hemisphere. An extraordinary image, they've set a new bar for tidal stream photography. And now I'm going to hand you over to the Director of Royal Museums Greenwich, Paddy Rogers. Good evening, I'm Paddy Rogers and I'm the Director of Royal Museums Greenwich. I hope you've been enjoying this evening's images as much as I have. And it's my honour now, and indeed my privilege and pleasure, to be able to announce the winners of the Young Astronomy Photographer of the Year Prize. But before I get there, there are a few people that I need to say thank you to. First of all, our sponsor, Liberty Specialty Markets, a deep and sincere statement of gratitude, because without you, so little of this would be possible. Thank you very much indeed. But also our judges world-class experts who give up their time freely in order to be able to have the great pleasure, but I assure you, hard work and terrible stress of having to make the difficult decisions. Last but no means least, of course, you, the entrants, who have done so much to make this possible by planning, capturing and processing photons from throughout the universe in order to present to us a real sense of beauty, awe and wonder. It's been a really tough competition this year with many thousands of entrants. And in particular, this prize has been very difficult. And I'm sure as you see the images, you'll realize why. First of all, we have three highly commended images and prizes for those will be given out to Double Comet by Zhu Runway from China, aged 15, M51, by Zi Yang Chang from China, aged 14, and M106 by two brothers, Ben and Josh from the UK, who are eight and 10 years old. Well done. In the second place, our runner up with Flaming Star and Tadpole Nebula is Sunny Chart, aged 15 from the UK. But this year, the Young Astronomy Photographer of the Year is, for the image A Dusty California, Danielle Borsari, aged 14, from Italy. So well done to all of you, and thank you in particular to our winner. But remember, the real winners are everybody who took part. Let's go back and have a look at more of these exciting and wonderful images. The Annie Maunder Prize for Image Innovation is a unique award designed to celebrate the principles of open science and science communication. It challenges astro processors to get creative with open source astronomy data to create a work of art that communicates something about space, the universe and our place in it. 
In this way, it continues the ascetic tradition started by Annie Maunder. This year, the prize goes to Anatomy of a Habitable Planet by Sergio Diaz Ruiz of Spain. Sergio has used data from multiple Earth-observing satellites to show what our world might look like to an alien observer, highlighting its uniqueness as a habitat for life and fragility as a precious resource for all its inhabitants. It highlights the environmental impact that has already also taken place. Congratulations to Sergio, who has demonstrated how looking up can teach us more about down here and created a compelling portrait of our world. Last, but by no means least, we are going to award our best newcomer prize. This special prize looks to award an astrophotographer with less than one year's experience, demonstrating that with the right dedication and momentum, it's possible to really dive in at the deep end. Jin Feng of the People's Republic of China was fortunate to have a good friend who guided them to capture this amazing shot of SH2308, showing that finding the right mentor is just as important as the right gear. And now, I'm excited to hand you over to Phil Hobbs, President at Liberty Specialty Markets, who will reveal the overall winner. Hi, I'm Phil Hobbs of Liberty Specialty Markets. We're proud to be the sponsor of the 16th Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition, continue a long and fruitful friendship with the Royal Museums Greenwich. As a global leader in fine art and species insurance, we're passionate about the visual arts sector and bringing important collections such as this to the public. Every year, these amazing, awe-inspiring photos bring out something new in our planet Earth, in the stars, the galaxies, and all of the glorious things in the universe. Last year, we even had an amazing scientific discovery hidden in one of the photographs. So the standard gets better every year, and something tells me this year it's going to get even better again. At Liberty, we value the unique perspective that each individual can bring and our photographers show that in all of their work. Also, as underwriters, we're constantly looking at the combination of science, data and creative thinking. And I can think of no better example of data and science and art coming together than in these photos. It's a great pleasure to announce distorted shadows of the moon's surface created by an annular eclipse by Ryan Imperio of the USA as the Astronomy Photographer of the Year. Congratulations, Ryan, on your amazing piece of work. I'm really looking forward to seeing the exhibition this year, and I know that you will enjoy it too. And finally, I want to say a massive thank you to all of the entrants. You know, your work on this is amazing. And with that, I'll hand back to this year's judges. Thank you, Phil, and congratulations, Ryan. Ryan's a first-time winner and understandably excited. We'll be shipping Ryan his trophy and other prizes, but for now, congratulations to every winner and our thanks to all of the entrants who share their amazing images with us. We cannot wait to see what you photograph next year.